The Supreme Court is the highest judicial power in the United States and Kavanaugh's appointment would ensure it would be under conservative control. But now a third alleged victim is said to be preparing to make similar claims. The details of those allegations are expected to be released within days. Well, for more on this, we have Peter Matthews, a political analyst and commentator on current affairs, who joins us now from Los Angeles. Peter, with the vote now set for Friday, does Thursday's hearing become more or less significant? It becomes very significant, especially since the Senate has stopped uh, Dr. Ford from being able to testify, have an uh, inquiry by the FBI. And they also won't let uh, Mr. Ramirez testify on the FBI either. They want the FBI out of it. Therefore, when the Senate makes a decision and it has this um, so-called hearing on Thursday, it's very crucial as to what comes uh, to place there. Because how Ms. Ford comes across, Dr. Ford comes across, will be very important in terms of how the vote will, will takes place the next day. And how can we expect Thursday's hearing to play out? Some have indicated what decision that they're going to make here, but other senators have said that this hearing is really going to determine for them uh, whether they will confirm the nominee or not. Yes, yeah, senators such as Susan Collins of Maine, Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, and also Jeff Flake of Arizona. There are three senators there who could possibly go the other way and vote against the Kavanaugh uh, recommendation on Friday. But it depends on how Dr. Ford and, you know, comes across in the interview, in the interrogation or whatever by the selected uh, woman lawyer who's supposed to or supposed to investigate this, as opposed to having the actual members of the committee actually ask questions of her. That would have been to me more appropriate to have the senators themselves ask questions of her and of Kavanaugh on Thursday, because that they are the, they're the Senate. They're supposed to advise and consent. I think it's a, it's a camouflage to have them hire another uh, prosecutor or a lawyer to come in there and interview uh, Ms. Dr. Ford. First of all, I, I very much believe the FBI should be involved in investigating the situation. These allegations are very serious against the nominee who could be there for the next 40 years and determine how American law and interpretations of how the branches of government act could be for the next 40 years or so. The Supreme Court is really supreme in this country in many ways with this power of judicial review where it can not only decide whether the uh, laws that Congress passes are constitutional, it can decide whether or not the Congress or the president has acted constitutionally and what they, when they make rulings. And that's a lot of power in the hands of nine people. He's one of the nine. He's the one that could make the court really conservative. You know, you mentioned the investigation, but I just want to touch on this topic for a second. It's not just Kavanaugh, but looking at these allegations in general with the Me Too movement, have we lost the presumption of innocence? Is it now guilty until proven innocent? I don't think so, because this presumption of innocence is still there. It's not that we're, people are going to convict him of some crime that he hasn't been investigated carefully. It just says that there's a serious allegation here, and there's a political appointment. It's not a, it's not a legal case. It's a political case as to whether or not this man is qualified to serve on the U.S. Supreme Court for the next 30, 40, 50 years. And that's uh, very important that this is investigated thoroughly and preferably by the FBI, a neutral source, because the Senate's not neutral. The Senate committee is, first of all, majority Republican, as the Senate also is. It's not a neutral entity to investigate this situation, these claims of Ms. Dr. Ford, uh, very carefully and objectively. Quickly before we go, you know, Trump has stepped up his defense of Kavanaugh. He's attempted to discredit his accusers. Is that strategy having an impact here? If, we, if the vote were to happen today, would Kavanaugh be confirmed? That is very difficult to say. It's a very close vote. But I can tell you this, what Trump is, Trump is doing is he's actually getting a lot of people upset in the state of Maine, where Susan Collins will be up for election in 2020. There's actually a movement that have already raised a lot of money for a possible potential opponent of hers to run against her if she votes for Kavanaugh. It depends on the groundswell that could be, could be picked up across the country, especially with women voters who are really upset at how cavalierly that this nominee is treating and as uh, the way Dr. Ford is being treated. Uh, by the senators and by this nominee. So it's very important to look at what happens with people of good conscience, of women, especially in America, who want to be treated respectfully and want Dr. Ford to have a fair investigation before she has to testify. That's what's going to determine how these people vote in the Senate on Friday. Peter Matthews in Los Angeles for us. Thanks so much.